Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back, you guys. This is part three. We're diving in with voice actor Derek Scholes, who does all the audiobooks for Breakfield and Berkey. Their Enigma series and Enigma Airs trilogy, not series. I get caught up on that all the time. And Roxanne is so gracious to correct me on it because I will lump everything into a series. Okay, let's just be honest. I do. To be completely honest. But you guys have been working. He has done the voice, the audiobooks, voice acting for 16 of your books, I think is what you said on recording part one and report one. So tell me how it was like, because you switched from Enigma series to Enigma airs, right? So tell me how you pivoted and just the relationship for the book, because you ended with Tracer for what was that for Enigma series? And then you went over into Enigma Airs and Enigma as the second book is forced for that one. So tell us what that transition was like and everything. Give me all the stuff, Roxanne. Give me all the stuff. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate that. So we did end the series um, with Gracie, which was the Enigma threat. And so Gracie is the next generation of the R group. And we decided that we were going to take her and her twin brother into the Enigma Heirs as a trilogy. And so what has happened from a storyline perspective is the R group and Cat team have been taken over by Gracie and JJ. And they are they are on a wild escapade after three half brothers um, who are wreaking havoc yeah. all over the place, primarily in the in the Caribbean and in Mexico. So they're kind of focused in that area. So Derek was gracious enough to um, do, obviously, the Enigma Tracer, which was book one and is available in audio. And now we're doing Enigma Force, which did just release on October the 9th. And I mean, his performance is unbelievable. Yeah, I, I got a chance to be able to uh, go through all of them. <clears throat> and uh, um, I didn't do anything for, for nine hours. Just like, man, this is good stuff. Man. I, I just, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, what do we say next? You know, and and uh, he's uh, he's he take he had life into the, the characters that um, and the subtleties and he, all that gets coaxed out, um, not too uh, um, too heavy handed, not too light. Um, definitely the Golden Rocks kind of uh, formula, just right. Okay. You know. <laughs> well, I really like listening to audiobooks just like Amy. But what what really makes it compelling is. You know, you have very distinctive voices for the characters when they're doing their speaking, but it's yeah. how he does the narration in between and the pauses and the intonations and even the, you know, just the where you want to hold your breath or you want to grip this. And in this particular book in Enigma Forest, there are quite a few places where you want to grip the seat. It's It's got some tough things going on. Yeah. So, I mean... I, I don't know exactly how you do that balance, Derek. Is that that voice acting coming coming through? Yeah, yeah pr pretty much. Yeah, it's um, it, you have to, it's as a voice actor, you have to remember that even the narrator is a character into itself because so mm -hmm. it's somebody telling a story, and <clears throat> you know, even the whole point he said, you know, even something as simple as that should have a little bit of an inflection to it, just to to kind of reiterate those things. So yeah, it's it's about making sure that even the narrator is given a voice or a character to him as well. Yeah. And that's been consistent throughout the series. And I think that's what, what Charles always gets really jazzed about. He's, I'm, I'm being told my own story. This is very <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, you once told me uh, you, you had trouble with some of the chapters. Um, mm -hmm. The ones that you had the most difficulty with were the ones where they they cracked you up and you had to had to go back a couple of times to, to read uh, to, to do the voice act. Did, yeah. did we can we trip you up on any of this, uh, on this one, or were you just so? <laughs> I don't know if I got to the point where I had like was completely completely unable to do it, but there were a few times where I'm like, oh my god, why did you do that, buddy? And I, like acting as though these are people actually doing it. I'm like, dude, you learned from the last one. What are you doing? <laughs> Like with JJ or like, or JW and you know and Granger, those two are like, oh, there's Quip, right? And there's two of them, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's the other thing that's interesting in this particular book is we actually have several chapters into the next book, the third book in the trilogy, which is in uh, Enigma Jewels, and um, again, some different characters in there as well, and some excitement 
-hmm. that goes with that. So this is more geared toward a YA kind of an audience, which I think you pulled through really beautifully. Did you, were you aware of that you were doing that or is that just natural for you? That it was in a, a young adult series? Um I I didn't know it actually until I looked on Audible once and it, one of the books was classified. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. I didn't realize that. But I think that's kind of a good thing because to me, it's very much like the story walks that fine line between, you know, not necessarily dumbing it down for young adults or, or acting like, you know, there's more immaturity to the characters, but they're mature enough that a lot of teenagers, you know, of teenagers would actually be that way or even the people in their early 20s. So I, I I don't notice it that much, but it makes sense when I actually started to think about it. Good. So well, uh, we uh, we we've spent a lot of time um, ratcheting down some of the the technical stuff on the backside. Mm. Um, you know, keeping the uh, dialogue a little frisky, um, but uh, not uh, not so uh, um, graphic as to say, okay, yeah. well, you're going to be 18 to be able to read this. So. Um, we're uh, we're mindful of that uh, the audience, um, but uh, you know there's some there's some uh, some chuckles and some oh my um, mm -hmm. moments in there that uh, um, should people should find entertaining. And and I'll tell you in our wildest dreams, Amy, if we ever get to have the series or the trilogy go to film, Derek has to be Ichabod. <laughs> oh my so, gosh! Yes, you got the whole time. You guys are just sitting here talking. Right. And I just I started laughing when Roxanne was like, Charles just gets real jazzed about it because I can just picture jar like Charles with jazz hands. It's like, oh, my God, my book's being read to me. Like, I can just picture this happening. And I love it. Like, it's just <laughs> I love it. And then I picture mm -hmm. Derek over here because he's read every book but the first one. OK, and there's yeah. so many, Derek. I don't know how you keep them straight because obviously I can't. So That's I'm precious. glad that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that one of us can. Okay, but I picture you over here as like the best friend. You know, every family member has like one of their parents has a best friend. They're just like part of the family. And they just kind of poke fun and you just laugh and you see this and you're like, oh man, you're such a stupid kid. You've already done that. Why haven't you learned from it? I picture <laughs> yeah. you as like, so I just see this yeah. like whole family. Charles over here doing jazz hands, so excited. And Derek's over here like, man, your kid's stupid. Like why, why do you keep <laughs> doing this stuff? You know, when Roxanne's just, you know, trying to keep the peace. So I absolutely, I love it. And I love yeah. this whole, this whole energy. And it definitely comes across, you know, your guys' relationship in your, you know, voice acting of their books. And I think it's important for sure. And so, you know, you guys on part four, we're going to dive into what other books Derek voice acts. Cause you guys know yeah. audiobooks are super popular. I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but I listen to seven seven a week, week and a half, depending on, you know, how, how much my kids cooperate. Okay. But join us on over for part four. We can get Derek talking about all that, but until next time, you guys, we'll talk to you later. Bye everybody. <laughs>